Mercedes-Benz shares have soared after the recent announcement that they're walking back their EV deadlines. They're not making enough money for them. If we look at the Mercedes-Benz website, they have six different battery electric vehicles, EQB, EQE, EQE SUV. Well, of course, the first one was a sedan. Then you have the EQS sedan, EQS SUV, and EQS Maybach. If you missed my uh, GLS 600 review, which is also a Maybach, check that out. That was quite the quite the vehicle. And I think it was my first Mercedes on the channel. I have a second Mercedes on the channel this week, and it is a GLA 35 AMG. And so that's a kind of, it's a this sporty little hatchback. Can't wait to share my impressions on it. But check out what's going on, Mercedes Benz floundering with EVs. However, people want their best. And Mercedes-Benz best is not EVs. It's actually internal combustion and hybrids and plug-in hybrids. So we're going to get into what's going on on Mercedes side of the court and grab your snacks and drinks, buckle in. Cost parity, according to Mercedes-Benz, is years away, says their CEO, Ola Kalenius, and they are now shifting their goalposts. I mean, it's one thing for the government to keep shifting their goalposts uh, for EV tax credit regulations and requirements, but now the automakers are doing it. If you missed my video yesterday, Genesis is coming out with new hybrids from Hyundai um, because their EVs, they're not, seemingly, they haven't made an official announcement, but it seems like the reports had a career saying a competitor to, to Mercedes-Benz Genesis is saying, oh, man, we're going to come out with hybrids in 2025 instead of going fully electric by the end of the decade. And wow, Mercedes-Benz is making a big statement here. If you think Mercedes-Benz is doing the right thing, pulling back on EVs and going a little bit more into internal combustion as well as hybrids, comment below. And if you enjoy this content, smash the like button. Mercedes-Benz warned that BEVs will remain more expensive than their combustion engine siblings for many, many years to come. Cost parity is a long ways away and their evidence is in the pricing. We know that their vehicles, so we go back uh, to that page, their electric vehicles are pretty expensive, but we're talking about Mercedes-Benz here. All their vehicles are expensive, but it seems like it seems like their profit margins aren't nearly as high on their battery electric vehicles. And if you're a lover of internal combustion engines, I have good news for you. Not only are they reinvesting, but they're saying that the combustion engine lineup will extend well into the next decade. Mercedes-Benz is not committing to fully battery electric lineup in the near future, even long-term future, it seems like at this point. Fourth quarter net profits fell 21% to just 3.4 billion while revenue dropped nearly 2% to almost 44 billion. Things aren't that dreary for them because their first three quarters mixed in, their profits were only a down uh, about 2%. Apparently, Mercedes is doing some big updates. They say by 2027, they will essentially have an entirely new lineup. And I hope that includes better styling. I mean, look at their cars. What else is there to say? There's nothing inspiring about the designs. They're very smooth. They all look kind of the same. Um, and it looks, it's just not, it's not good enough. But let me know down below. Are you a big fan of Mercedes recent designs, especially on their battery electric vehicles? I don't think that's helping them too much, to be honest. So we need that redesign lineup to look a lot more aggressive, a lot more attractive in the next few years. And I think I think they'll do that. Hopefully they move away from what's called the, the melting soap bar design on a lot of their EVs and normal vehicles as well. It's not just their EVs. Their CEO said, Europe is not even ready for all electric lineup by 2030. Customers are holding back for a range of reasons, including a lack of charging infrastructure and appealing electric models. In the midterm, Mercedes says they expect EVs to account for half of the sales in the second half of the decade rather than in 2025. So they've pushed it back five years. Their EV target, 50% battery electric, pushed it back five years to 2030. And who knows? Who's to say that they can't keep pushing it back depending on consumer demand? Now, they expect that their battery electric, including plug-in hybrid vehicles, 
their share will be stuck between 19 and 20, 20% for 2024. But Mercedes is investing heavily on its next gen EVs due around 2025, 2026, maybe 2027, just as mid decade. So, I mean, we're pretty much mid decade here in 2024. But they're saying variable cost of the platform expected to be 30% lower. We know that their competitor is the upcoming CLA, that red concept redesign. It, the styling is no doubt better than their current designs. But is it good enough? And is their technology and their range, et cetera, going to be good enough to? claw some market share back in their favor. But if it can get 466 miles on a charge, that sounds pretty promising. But again, when you put it out as a concept, you always have to take out um, the range estimates with a grain of salt. Sales of fully electric car this year are set to grow at the slowest rate since 2019, according to Bloomberg. And they're reminding us that Audi said it's pairing back its EV rollout as of late last year. I did not cover that on the channel, but not surprised, right? It's not just happened to Audi. I already mentioned Genesis is doing it. I wouldn't be surprised at some point Lexus will do it, but Lexus is saying that they want to be fully battery electric in North America, Europe, and China by 2030. What if there's no demand for it? Or not saying no demand, but what if the demand is maybe 30% of their lineup by 2030, not 100%. So it'll be so fascinating, guys. Make sure you're subscribed because this ever-shifting sands in the EV market, I want to cover it here on the channel to keep you guys as informed as possible. Just like all automakers, their profit is going to take a hit this year. They're worried about um, the, the pent-up demand being, well, no longer pent-up. So demand's dropping. And also, we have really high borrowing costs, high interest rates. That's also tapering demand as well. And so they're thinking their profits are going to go as low as 10% this year. Even though their net profits were down last year, they still were 126 percent in the black. Um, but if we look at where they're expecting this year, it could be 10%, maybe lower. So time will tell. If a demand drops, you have to start incentivizing your vehicles more. That's going to cost the automaker more. Maybe this is factored into that 10% profit margin. I'm not sure. Now, I don't talk about China that much. Obviously, I don't live in China and the auto market there is even crazier than it is here. But they're saying that Mercedes wants to introduce 15 new models this year to try to keep up with Tesla and BYD. 15 new models? I don't understand how that's possible. Comment down below if you understand that statement. Slower economic growth, supply chain bottlenecks, and trade tensions between US, China, and Europe weighed on the outlook for 2024 as well. Um, European Union is doing a probe into China right now to see how much unfair ball game practices are being played uh, to favor the Chinese autos over the imported companies or the non-domestic Chinese brands. Anyways, first quarter sales are likely to be below the previous year's level. For 2024, they're raising their average price by 2% uh, to about $80,000, increasing spending on research and development for future technologies such as their MB.OS. I'm playing around with their Mbox software right now, and um, let's just say that wait for my review. And finishing up, heading over to Reuters, shares for Mercedes-Benz rose sharply to 6% following this news, this announcement of not only them buying up some of their shares with their share buyback program, but also due to them pumping the brakes on wasting money into EVs in the current market. So, wow. What do you guys think? I'll see you guys in the comments down below. If you want to see more of this, definitely let me know. And make sure to stay tuned for my GLA 35 AMG review in the next few days. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.